This dramatic incident happened on November the 29th, 2020, during the 15th round of the Formula One World Championship, the Bahrain Grand Prix. The 34-year-old French racing driver, Romain Grosjean, had failed to qualify the day before, so he started from the last row. During the third turn, hoping to gain ground, he performed a dangerous maneuver, clipped a front wheel of the Russian Daniel Kivat's car and crashed into a rail at a speed of 192 kilometers per hour. Grosjean's car broke in two and caught fire. After 27 seconds, to the amazement of the numbed audience, the driver's silhouette appeared from the fire. The miracle would have been impossible without the discovery of flame-resistant fiber by scientist Wilfred Sweeney. In this episode of How It Was, we will recall the most tragic events in the history of auto racing, tell you about the dangers of Formula One, and the scientific inventions that have completely changed this sport, preventing numerous fatal accidents. Formula One is a sport in which a few split seconds decide everything. Speed differences reach hundreds of kilometers per hour. The less braking, the higher the racing pace. But the cost of such a risk is high. If you lose concentration for a moment, control over the car is lost and an accident is inevitable. At the sight of Grosjean getting out of the flames, most of the spectators and specialists could not believe their eyes. This rescue looked especially incredible for those who remember one of the worst accidents in Formula One, the fiery crash in 1976 at the Nürburgring that nearly took the life of Austrian motor racing great Niki Lauda. Lauda lost control of his Ferrari in the second lap of the race when his car spun into the barriers on the right side and then back across the track. It then collided with another car and burst into flames. Two cars that followed, driven by Harold Ertl and Brett Langer, had no chance of avoiding a collision. Lauda and Langer's cars caught fire. Trapped in the wreckage, Lauda could not get out of the blazing vehicle. The surviving Langer and Ertl rushed to pull the rider out of the fire. Soon they were joined by two more participants in the race, Guy Edwards and Arturo Mezzario. They did not manage to free Nicky right away. Much of his face and scalp and half of one ear were burned off. His lungs and bronchial passengers were seared from inhaling flames and burning plastic. At the hospital, Lauda fell into a coma and even when he began to regain consciousness, doctors still doubted whether he would survive. Later, Nicky recalled how a priest was brought to his room to give him the last rites. I expected the priest to say something like, God is watching you, my son. Nicky Lauda recalled years later. Instead, he just touched my shoulder. I thought, did he give me the last rites without talking to me? That really annoyed me so much. I said, I'm going to kick myself to stay alive. Lauda not only survived, but returned to racing just six weeks after the accident. He began to cover the scars received during the accident with a red Parmalat cap which has become one of the attributes recognizable by the press and the public. Lauda underwent only one plastic surgery to completely restore his eyelids. And the rest of the damage, he said, did not weigh on him. There were even larger fires, not related to accidents in the history of Formula One. A fireball exploded at the pit stop of Joss Verstappen during the 1994 German Grand Prix. Fuel leaked onto the car, after the fuel hose was disconnected. As it turned out later, Verstappen's team had removed a mandatory filter so the fuel flow could be higher and refuelings could be faster. The car with Verstappen in it was engulfed in flames for several seconds. Fortunately, the firefighters dealt with the fire instantly. Apart from the slight burns to his face, the driver was uninjured and even won third place during the next Grand Prix. Unfortunately, by no means did the racers manage to get out of the fire alive in all cases. The history of Formula One is full of tragic accidents. From 1953 to 1978, 42 Formula One drivers died in accidents, 
while from 1978 to 1994 there were four fatal accidents. 1994 to this day, there was only one death. Why did the number of fatalities decrease? In the 1950s, cars were far from perfect, even in terms of build quality, let alone safety. Leaks occurred in the fuel and oil lines, and when flammable liquids hit the hot parts of the car, a flame almost always broke out. Yet at the dawn of Formula One, fires with a fatal outcome were a relative rarity. The 60s and the 70s, however, became the blackest page in the history of the race. A growing problem was the lack of qualified track employees who could pull multiple drivers out of the fire. The first serious fire of Formula One happened during the 1954 Belgian Grand Prix. The tail of Roberto Mieres's Maserati caught fire at Spa-Francorchamps. The Argentinian driver was able to jump out of the moving car, getting away with only minor burns. More tragic was the accident suffered by Stuart Lewis Evans at the 1958 Moroccan Grand Prix. The engine of his van wall car seized and sent it into the barriers at a high speed. The car then caught fire with Lewis Evans still inside. He had suffered severe burns and was flown in a private jet to a hospital in England. The racer died of his injuries six days after the accident. The event that finally made auto racing organizers seriously concerned about the driver's safety took place in 1964 during the United States Road Racing Championship. For Edward Sachs Jr., nicknamed the Clown Prince of Auto Racing, winning the race was not the only important goal. If you can't win, impress, he said. During one of the races, three laps before the finish, he saw that his right wheel began to flake off. He decided not to take the risk and stopped to replace it. I'd rather finish second than die, Sachs explained. Unfortunately, in 1964, on the second lap of the Indianapolis 500 race, caution did not save Edward Sachs. The video of the fire that claimed the life of the clown prince shocked Americans. Under pressure from the press, the race organizers restricted the amount of fuel in the cars. They also encouraged developing a fireproof racing suit, which subsequently led to the mandatory use of Nomex racing suits. The Nomex fire-resistant clothing is a breakthrough invention of Wilfred Sweeney. He was born in Glasgow, Scotland on April 22, 1926. As a child, he developed a keen interest in science and often received gifts such as chemistry sets for Christmas. He loved coming up with concoctions such as invisible inks. In 1967, Wilfred Sweeney, PhD in chemistry, helped the American company DuPont create Nomex, a heat and flame resistant textile. Today, in addition to racers, Nomex is used by firefighters, astronauts and the military. Unlike flame retardant treated FRT materials, Nomex fibers are inherently flame resistant. The flame resistance is an inherent property of its polymer chemistry. It doesn't diminish during the life of the fiber and it cannot be washed out or worn away. So it can withstand fire much longer. But the main advantage of this innovative material is the presence of special pores between the fibers which helps block the hot air from moving through the fabric to the wearer. In 2020, the Formula One leadership introduced a uniform standard for racing suits, increasing their level of protection by 20%. According to the new regulations, clothing, including socks and underwear, must withstand fire at 700 degrees centigrade for 10 seconds. Also, the requirements for the heat transfer rate have become more stringent. With the new Nomex gloves, you can hold your hand in an oven while melting silver. So let's go back to the Bahrain Grand Prix track and look at Nomex in action. As a result of the accident, Romain Grosjean's left leg was pinched. The driver had to take it out of the boot to free himself. Then he moved the offset headrest and steering wheel all this he did without assistance, whilst on fire. He managed to climb out of the wreckage of his car, 
after it had penetrated a steel barrier, slicing it in half and erupting into flames. Rescuers and medics arrived at the scene 11 seconds after the accident. A firefighter ran across the track and pointed the extinguisher at Grosjean, pushing back the flames just long enough for the medic to get to the driver and pull him over the barrier and to safety. Romain staggered, the visor on his helmet almost melted. It was hard for him to breathe. He suffered minor burns on his hands and ankles, but was otherwise okay. This miraculous survival was facilitated by the halo, a titanium bar curved around the driver's head that was introduced as a must-have safety device for racing cars after the fatal accident of Jules Bianchi in 2014. The French pilot received severe head injuries, was in a coma for a long time and eventually died. In the aftermath of Grosjean's incredible escape from death, Bianchi's mother said that she was happy that he survived and that the extra safety measures brought in due to her son's death could have been what made sure he didn't suffer any serious damage. Romain Grosjean spent the night after the accident in the hospital with burns on his hands. Unlike the rest of the body, only one layer of Nomex covers them to maintain the racer's sensitivity. In a video message from the hospital, Romain said, I wasn't in support of the halo several years ago, but I think it's the greatest thing we brought to Formula One. Without it, I wouldn't be able to speak to you. Throughout the history of Formula One, racing technology and protective equipment for drivers have undergone substantial changes in terms of reliability and safety. In 2010, the race management cancelled refueling during the Grand Prix and thus minimised the likelihood of a fire during the pit stop. Yet even though the racer's safety has become a top priority, it has not yet been possible to overcome the fire element completely. And this is unlikely to be possible until Formula One racing cars start using other energy sources instead of flammable liquids. If you enjoyed the video, do like it and ring the bell so you don't miss new episodes of How It Was.